like people cover their lips when they're trying to show you they're listening to you. Oh, great. Spread more racial stereotypes on this app. But I guess it's okay because you're an African-American of color. You know something, Bruce? What's up? See, man, I could deal with a white person with, with a sense of humor, man. Hey, look, that's what we all need in these times. Sense of humor because all that other stuff, the hate and all that crap, man. Yeah. You'd be surprised at how many videos that I have skipped that it has so many, so much racism and hate it. But at y'all's request, I, I do not even put them in the lineup. I don't even put them in the lineup. I just edit them out. What happens if our seaports go on strike? The strike is set for October 1st, so you better share this with everyone. Because if our ports close, everything we depend on closes with it. Let's talk about what would happen within the month of October. On day one, international fuel shipments are the first to feel the impact. Crude oil tankers stuck off means no new fuel entering refineries. By the end of the day, concerns spread across industries as gas stations, trucking companies, and airlines brace for immediate shortages. Everything from fuel to imported goods is at risk, but fuel becomes the most critical loss. By day three, gas stations are starting to run dry and rationing begins. Prices surge as demand skyrockets. Without fuel, trucks can't deliver goods and the first shortages show up in grocery stores. Businesses relying on imported oil like refineries scramble to maintain operations with whatever reserves they have left. The ripple effect starts to hit home. No fuel means no transportation. And without transportation, the flow of goods stop. Day 7. The energy crisis takes hold. Within the first week, the impact of fuel shortage deepens. Trucks, trains, and ships that move essential supplies across the country slow to a halt. Agriculture and manufacturing are crippled, unable to operate without fuel for machinery and transportation. Airlines begin canceling flights and public transportation services are cut. Gas prices hit all-time highs as panic buying intensifies. By week two, the power grid struggles and collapse looms. Power plants that rely on imported fuel start to struggle and blackouts spread as they ration what's left. People begin hoarding fuel and chaos erupts at the pumps. The stock market plummets as industries reliant on global supply chains begin to crumble. The economy falters and unemployment skyrockets as factories close and businesses shutter. By week four, total breakdown of society. By the end of the month, the energy crisis and fuel shortages bring society to its knees. Cities erupt into fuel riots and law enforcement is overwhelmed. With no fuel, food distribution collapses and starvation becomes a real threat. Communities are left to fend for themselves as fuel reserves dry up completely, leaving transportation, emergency services, and the economy in ruins. Without port, Crude oil can't get in. Without crude oil, fuel can't be made. Without fuel, everything grinds to a halt. When the fuel stops, America stops. And just so we're clear, this could all happen within the month of October. AP out. And you know what's crazy about that? Well, just so everybody know that they already started to route all of the uh, shipments to the West Coast so we can still get some in. But it's funny how all of this is happening per election time think about that for a minute i mean because if all of that happens and everything stops then guess what can't have an election does anybody else find it weird that so many people seem to live for years if not decades with cancer without knowing that they have cancer but then they find out they have cancer and they start cancer treatments and they're dead within weeks to a few months this is true but it's all dependent upon what type of cancer you have because if you have brain cancer, let's just say for instance, and the, and the tumors in your brain is growing, then that could very well kill you. So it all depends. Did they just find a zombie praying mantis? Watch this. All right, y'all take a look at this right here, man. This is pretty, pretty wild. Man. <laughs> Ain't no way. They said the majority of these they found has got the same issue. What do y'all think's really going on? Dude, that's crazy, ain't it? Like.
absolutely crazy. Yeah, that's crazy, but I think I've seen that somewhere. It's a parasite, and those things are, like, most common in bugs, like bees, hornets, and stuff like that, and praying mantis, uh, too, but uh, I don't know. Could be a zombie praying mantis. Who knows? You want to say hi? <laughs> it's my homie. He's been here for a few weeks with me. What you got, buddy? I think he's trying to give me something. He got something in his hand. I love you too, bud. <laughs> I told you my bees be with me all day, baby. All day. That just goes to show you. Insect drones are real. ABC News has obtained a videotape that shows clearly what happened when the president fell ill. Here's White House correspondent Ann Compton. Here's something odd I came across. This is President Bush Sr. Not to be confused with his son, a later president. And in 1992, he vomited on the Japanese prime minister and then fainted. Now the odd things. Firstly, I don't remember this happening at all. But now there's all these clips on YouTube I'm just seeing. Secondly, watch his wife. That's Barbara Bush, who some say is Aleister Crowley's daughter. Some say is a man. As soon as she sees he's going to vomit, she darts over to cover his mouth and nose. Possibly the worst thing you could do, right? Was she trying to hide something being seen from camera? And thirdly, look at this news clip. They are about to report that the president died the same day, then suddenly backtracked. This just into CNN headline news, and we re repeat, or we say right off the bat, we have not confirmed this through any other source. We are now getting a correction. We will not uh, give you that story. It was regarding some rather tragic news involving President Bush, but... Uh... And that's real strange, and uh, I don't remember that. I was I was a kid when that happened, but dang. But wait a minute, Al Alistair Crowley's son or daughter? I, what's... what? Let's see what you liberals have to say now to the founding trustee of the Heritage Foundation who wrote Project 25 openly endorses Kamala Harris. So is she pro Project 25 now? Yeah, I want to hear you liberals justify that. Let's see what you liberals have to say. Now that's crazy and some interesting news right there. The She, she was said... Trump is 2025. He's pro 2025 and this, that right there. And now she gets endorsed by the people who actually wrote it. Well, where, where are we going? Where are we going, people? I have never felt more bamboozled in my life. You're telling me this is what grass fed means? I'm thinking they're free, happy cows living off the land. But no. This is the reality. Like, literally everything is a lie. Everything. Here I am thinking I'm getting a better quality of meat and the animals weren't tortured for me to eat this. And it's the same thing. But you know what, though? That even though that's crazy how they're feeding the cows, I I, I really think the cows should be out on the range and they're, they're eat, and eating. That's what I think. I think it's healthier for them. But... I would still much rather eat this type of meat than the other. Look what I'm filming at my window right now. And not kidding, folks. One, two, three crap. Very visible on the coast right now. And so this one's about 300 feet, probably across. Next one, 500 filter. Next one is about a thousand. Off the coast of the Atlantic Ocean. Right. Not off. All right, so 
Look at this guy. Look at that. Bring it on. Okay. All right, so check this out. Can it get close? Look at the colors now. Look at the people. Definitely getting some attention right now. Definitely getting attention, folks. So anyway, to the right. Uh, keep proud. Oh, there we go. Center. Uh, I don't know exactly. To the left. Like beautiful. I have never seen anything like this. This is so beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, that's definitely a weird looking storm cloud right there. They are my witness. We're, we're looking at souls inside the light. See them? We're like, that's not dust particles because. Why is it so bright? Look at them. Let's zoom in again. Look. Yeah, they keep look. They, why are they why are they blinking like that? Those are the deceased. See that one? Look at that. That's bright as hell. No, bro, that can be, bro. It's shining through the light. Oh, What do you think? You know what's crazy? Is that a lot of these uh, young young younger people you could tell that no you know what let me rephrase that things have changed since we were kids i remember being a kid like in the early 90s or the late 90s going outside and being outside till the street light come on and you could see these bugs flying in a bunch around the street lights and it's crazy because now i don't even see those no more I don't even see them anymore. But that's exactly what they're seeing. And if that's not what they're seeing, it's nothing but dust particles. And that is a testament to everything that we are breathing in every day. Olha isso. Será possível?
Oh my gosh. I don't know if y'all can hear that, but in my headphones, it's super, super vivid. Not vivid, but it's super prominent. It sounded like a demon was talking. Like, go back and play that video. I even muted the music on the part of that video just so y'all can hear it. It sounded like a demon was speaking. Just another reason for me to not even get one of them calls. Not only because it exploded, but it was talking. No, 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 no. I'm good. For women, if they're wearing spandex and lycra leggings, it leads, it gives off this, this estrogen mimic chemical that leads, that leads to obesity. So Obesity? Correct. And this is proven, peer-reviewed studies, etc. What is in those garments? What is in that fabrication? For women... Ooh. Shit's getting weird. Pardon me. On this episode of what? <laughs> the White Swan. Close enough, bud. That's close enough. He looked at him like, you spoke to me? <laughs> it's close enough. Get out of here. Go. Nope. What's all this hollering? Motherfucker gave you about 17 to 18 warning signs before he rushed you. <laughs> For real, he was giving you signs with his eyes. Okay, he was like. <laughs> he was. <laughs> All right, bro, I warned you. Charge! She ain't gonna listen. <laughs> And you get the hollering and shit. I don't understand the hollering part. <laughs> and I think you picked up the wrong script. Get out of here. Close enough. Those are his lines. Okay. There you go. Why the White's Wonder Antler Edition? <laughs> Collecting binary codes from the cemetery, dude. This is very interesting. Y'all need to go follow this guy too, man. Okay. Johnny, 2021. Wait, wait, wait. It's a wild guess why, bro. <laughs> We're running binary, code. binary codes here, guys. Off the get, thing. Get up, get away from me. Guys, we're right here at the cemetery. This person was born in 2023, and we're collecting binary codes. We have both of our phones on airplane mode, so it collects no binary codes at all. But when you get close to her grave, just look, you had a number right there. Get close. It's 2022, guys. Binary codes up the ass right there. There's information coming out of the graves, guys. And and doctor, just so everybody knows, because they think. You don't want to look, look, guys. That grave is is giving binary codes. If any of y'all have an idea of what binary codes are you would know this can't be right it shouldn't be right but if it is right could it be the return of the living dead eventually because i mean we got a lot of stuff going on and it's been real strange but and if that did happen it wouldn't be as strange as we think it would you know they eat Babies, that is not bullshit. It's true. So it's not just the dogs and the cats, not just the pets. It's not just the dogs and the cats. 
they're full on vampires. And everybody still thinks I'm crazy, but I'm not crazy. They're full on vampires. They love the taste of human flesh and they drink human blood. They do, Tucker. Stop staring at me like that. You're freaking me out, man. Because they you do. spent your life in the entertainment business, so I think you have some authority on this. So many kids that I was in mental institutions with over the years, they are all from those cults. And they've covered it all up. They cover it all up. And, uh, you know, I just pray to God. I'm just going to pray to God that he opens everybody's eyes in this country. By the time we go in to vote for Trump, that he will open up everybody's eyes and they will stop pretending to be asleep. You know what they say, you can't wake people up that are pretending to be asleep, but I pray to God, please wake up even those who are pretending to be asleep with the irrefutable truth of what the worst people on this planet are really up to. They are really up to that. They're doing it. There are so many victims. There are so many victims. There are so many children victims that are now adults. The epidemic in America is child sexual abuse, and I just want people to see it. I want people to open up their eyes and see how prevalent and horrible it is. One of three girls, one of four boys in this country today. It's just horrible, and uh, you just can't la 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 it away anymore. It's going to get more and more apparent, and you got to choose your side. You know, although I believe Roseanne, it makes me wonder how is she, because she's been talking about this for a long time. How can she continue to talk about this? Her and Tucker speak against these so called baby eaters and nothing happens to them. We've seen things happen to, you know, people that have spoke out in the past. It's hard, it's hard to really put a finger on, are these people really for us or do they, are, are they with the actual baby? Yeah. All right, listen, hear me out. Okay, that Space Force sign, zoom in, just appeared, not even like a couple months ago. Look at that facility up there, Stranger Things type vibes. Who is those things over there? It's super dark. This is the clearest place where you can see all the stars here. This is where, this is where the aliens are. This is where they walk. Yeah, I Yeah, I don't think that's what aliens are, but I think they put that there because they waiting on that 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 ship that's supposed to be hurling towards us at light speed that the James Webb telescope caught. Yeah, she said it ju they just put that sign up there and it's called Space Force. Oh, they preparing to fight. Hi, I wanted to tell you about a conversation that I just had with an acquaintance of mine. Uh, she called me and she said, girl, aren't you excited that we can have the first black woman president? And I was like, why should I be excited about that? And she said, because it's the first black woman president. She'll be the first black woman president. And I was like, so let me ask you this. Are you excited about us about to go into an apocalypse? She said, girl, what are you talking about? I was said, do you know what is happening with Russia right now? Do you know what's going on in Ukraine right now? And she said, no, girl, I don't have time to think about that. I have a sorrow that's about to be president. I said, let me tell you, let me give you something to really be excited about or unexcited about. I said, if she becomes president, all of you who are celebrating about this first black woman president let me tell you what's about to happen to every child that you know that's probably from the ages of 5 to 25 because when there are world wars you know they last like 10 years and then the aftermath the wars that result from those world wars could last another 10 years that means every kid that you know that's five years old and up to 26 right now both male and female, because remember, the Democrats voted to let women go to war. I said, so you are, you are, think it's more important that you have a black woman president than it is for you to save the lives of all of these black children that you know 
her people are going to send to war. You know who goes to war. It is not going to be any one of these celebrities. I guarantee you, there is not one celebrity that just endorsed her that them or their children will be at war. But all of the kids in your family, and because you're, I know you, you are not wealthy. Your kids will go there. I said, so you're celebrating that too? And she said, I can't believe you're thinking about that. I said, I can't believe that as an adult, you are not thinking about that. Why are we having this discussion? When we're talking about the president of the United States, we're not talking about the sorority president. We don't care about that. I don't care. I said, I would love, yeah, let y'all go and make her the national president for the AKAs. In the meantime, I'm looking for a president that can sit down and have peace and negotiate peace with Vladimir Putin. This woman just sat on the debate and said that when she went to meet with Zelensky two or three days later, they were bombed by Russia. I said, and that's who you're voting for, for real. I said, let me tell you something. You better start watching something else besides the, all of the stations that act like this is the best thing that ever happened to her. You better stop acting like abortion is the only issue that women have because what women need to worry about right now is what's going to happen to their five-year-olds when that five-year-old turns 18 because you know now selective service is automatic. They don't get to register. It's automatically done. When your five-year-old girl goes to war, that's what you need to celebrate. Since you all think this is funny, that this is just something to do right now, and we're all happy because the Sara is going to be president. I was like, girl, if you don't get off my phone. Anyway, let's continue this conversation at nine o'clock. I'm gonna have a live and I'm gonna continue to talk about it. I hope to give you some more information. I was just kind of venting and I just wanted to tell you that right quickly. So there you have it. Even one of Kamala's sorority sisters don't want her in there. <laughs> we know that we're in a fight. If, if, if they want to fight, then a war is what they're gonna get. I've been a longshoreman for over 23 years. And one thing I do know to be true, gas has went up. The cost of living has constantly went up. And, 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 and throughout these 23 years that I've been on the waterfront, we've only asked for $2, $3, or maybe $5 over the course of the time. So we've done our part. And we're, now we're asking, hey, you do your part. Because during the pandemic, we never stopped working. Imagine that a hospital is looking for a type of blood uh, to be shipped to it, and it's on, on the ship that I'm working on, but it's pouring down raining, lightning. We can't stop working. We got to get that, that box off so that that hospital can continue to drive and, and save the people's lives that they've been working on. Mm -hmm. So that's where we're at with it. And we, we just want to be respected for it. And, and, and I think it's high time that we demand that. And we, we, we're long overdue. Automation is serious. Yeah. Because when you bring new automation in to take away from our job, you don't, you don't make means for that person to have a job. They're, they're, they're pushed over to the side and they can't do their job that they've been accustomed to doing. What we're asking is allow our people to continue to work in this industry without going to get an extra job to make ends meet. Allow us to take care of our family like we've been doing with, with the wages that we currently have in place. Continue that trend. That's all we're asking for. And if we have to sit out two days, two weeks, two months, we're prepared to do that. Yeah, that whole strike thing with the longshoremen, man, is crazy. I hope before October the 1st, they come to a decision. Because if not, the days for us as Americans are going to be long. All right, guys, it's happening now. Be ready. Everything that you need starting now. The ports are going on strike. They already started, as you can see. These containers are starting to sit. A lot of them are empty. And they're not taking them back to the to the rail yards starting now. So what you need to do is get as many as much supplies as you can. The strike on start in five days. Should be starting on the first. Seven out of ten of the major ports are going on strike. So I would suggest that you get prepared now. I'm waiting till later. This is what we've got to deal with. This is what we're going through. They're going to order out of chaos. So as you can see, it's sitting. We're not moving. Not going to go nowhere for a while. Get all your supplies. 
You need it now. And the sad part about it is that most Americans can't even afford to get extra supplies. And yeah, they may be setting up for the ports to come from the West Coast, but that could take days to get to this side. Mind you, I live in the Mid-South, so that's close to the East Coast. I'm not on the coast, but close to it. So, with that being said, most Americans cannot afford to get prepared. Regarding the presidential can mm -hmm. candidacy, who do you think would be more beneficial for the black community, Mr. Oh. Anderson, Mr. Trump? Now, this is my opinion. I'm about to get some people mad at me, but I think who would benefit black people more is most certainly, unequivocally, I say unashamedly, not even close. <laughs> Nowhere in the same universe, <laughs> Mr. Trump. It's not even a conversation. Actually, if we're talking about who's gonna benefit the black community more, we shouldn't bring her name up. Mr. Trump, absolutely. I don't know Mr. Trump. I just imagined if I met him, okay? And then I imagined if I met Ms. Harris. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking to them on behalf of you. Okay, so we have real black excellence here hustling backward and you and what y'all wanna do and the work you're doing in the community and what we have going on. And I'm speaking to them and I'm trying my best to get them to understand what the benefit is of what we're doing on black people specifically and as an extension, all people. When I think of that personally, me talking to these candidates, I don't get the sense that Ms. Harris would feel what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I don't get the sense that she's a leader of men, for sure, of a nation. Not that, not that she, it has nothing to do with her being a woman, right. because women can lead most surely. We don't, we don't have a problem with women in leadership or women speaking. It's not a matter of her being a woman. It's simply a matter of within her eye, personally, it's my opinion. I don't get the sense that she would even desire or have the knowledge or the leadership ability to say, let's make that go. Let's fix that. Let's mm -hmm, work that out. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna leave it here. I know I always say, stay ready so you don't have to get ready, but let's be real, y'all. It's tough out here. We around here watching YouTube videos about what's going on in our country because it's the freest thing to do. Because that's pretty much all we can do. It costs, it literally costs me nothing to come down here and record videos. The only thing it costs me is my time. Of course, yes, I had to buy the equipment to do it, but thank the most high that my equipment still works so I don't have to constantly pay for it. The only thing I have to pay for is the electricity that powers these things. And I say it all that to say this, this is where we are. We are using every ounce and inch of our livelihood to be on YouTube to find a decent person to make us feel like it's okay. Because not only you do it, I do it too. Because I mean, you know, I don't just watch myself. I watch others that's in this niche that I'm doing right now that talks, that watch the same kind of videos just to hear their insights and their takes on certain things. You know, it, it's amazing the amount of support that others get based on what they do and the following versus what I see others coming up in this niche because I see a lot of people do it because they think, oh, it's a quick way to do it. You ain't gotta do nothing but sit there and talk in front of a camera, but they don't realize that it's more, it's more so personality than anything because you don't have the personality and then, and it, and it ain't genuine, then it ain't gonna count for nothing. I can get on here and be fake all day. But that ain't in me. I'd rather be real. And sometimes I take the hit on my channel, like with subscribers and likes and views because of the way that I think, because I'm an unbiased person. I don't have, I don't choose one side. I don't. And because of that, people would subscribe today and then unsubscribe tomorrow. And that's fine with me. I'm not, not here to talk about that. My thing is, is that this is where we are in America because we need something to make us feel good. And I'm just glad that for the few of you that watch my videos, that come and watch my videos, I can be that voice that makes you feel like everything is gonna be okay. And because I'm an optimistic person, I do believe everything is gonna be okay. This is the storm that we're going through. And yes, it may get a little worse, but that's what going through things is. It gets worse before it gets better, right? Got to go through the thunderstorm before you can see the sun again, right? The clouds have to pass over, correct? So that's what this is. 
this is nothing new america has saw a lot of these things in the past and and overcame so you have to look back in america's past and understand that we've had terrible presidents in the past we've we've been in situations where we've had pos's for presidents to get in the office and tear the country up all for another president to come back and put it kind of back on balance I still stand on what I say. Even though I see a lot of things looking glam and, you know, that they doing the strike and all this stuff before the election comes up, I still believe that Trump is somewhere in the cut. Like, look here, bro. He's calling his people. He's probably going to call those people down there that, at, at the Longshoremen uh, Union. And he's probably going to tell them, look here. Pay them. I'll help them. You know. Who knows? I believe that he's doing it. I believe that Trump is sitting back and he's watching everything that's going on in this country. And he is using every ounce of his resources to make sure things stay level just so the just so the election can happen. So he can get in and hit the ground right. That's how I think. I can rant all day, but I won't do that. But like I always say. <laughs> Do what you will with that information. And hey, if you like what you saw, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, turn on that notification bell so you know when I upload. Get in the description, follow all my social media, and remember, challenge the argument, not the person.